Welcome to At The Bar. We've been on our summer holidays for the last couple of months, but we're now back with a boom. And in particular, Boom Battle Bar at the Centre in Glasgow. Come and join us and see why this is such an inspirational venue for so many venues across the industry. First and foremost, axe throwing. I mean, axe throwing in a venue. How amazing is that? I know there's plenty of people that would love to throw an axe at my head. We've got digital darts, an amazing game, and I've certainly got the belly for a darts player, built for economy, not for speed. We're going to be having a chat with Natalie. We're going to be meeting Natalie very shortly. She's a new member of the team. Hi, Natalie. We're going to be joining the two amazingly inspirational people behind the venue. We've got Jack and Danny. We'll be meeting them very, very shortly. Good seas, guys. What an amazing place. Beer pong. How many times have you played beer pong? Big, big scale. Love it. Look at the venue. Look at the decor in the place. It's amazing. And now we've got table tennis in there. We've also got all the games that we played as kids, but on steroids. Absolutely amazing. Pool ball. Not mini golf, but pool ball. How cool is that? It's unbelievable. And on top of all that, we've got a massive, massive screen for live sport. Come and join us and meet the rest of the team and see how this venue is going to be absolutely amazing. Time to meet Natalie. Hello. Natalie, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm good, thank you for joining us. Thank you so part much. Part of the team. Thank you so much for having me. What are you going to be up to today? Today, I am going to sample some of the cocktails. Mm. I am going to be trying some stuff on the menu, so food and drink. Oh. Love about food, as you can tell. Listen, and then I'm going to kick your butt at some of these games. <laughs> Ooh, competitive streak. Nice. I don't know if you'd like to beat the boss in the first show, though, but that's, we'll see. What Natalie won't tell you is she's an amazing singer and got a vast experience in the hospitality industry and the entertainment industry, which all of that will become more and more apparent on the show. But uh, thank you, Natalie, and I'll speak to you very shortly. I'm now going to go with the wonders of modern technology and waves over to Jack and Danny. <laughs> We're here with Jack and Danny. How are you guys? Very good, very good. Thank you for having us. Thanks for letting us on the show. It's okay. such an amazing venue, honestly. It really, really stands out. Thanks very much. But I don't think the, the concept is, is not from a standard background for you guys, is, is that right? This is a bit Absolutely of a change not. from the norm. Yeah, just just a bit. So, um, yeah, me and Danny are both trained accountants. We sort of were oh. accountants since we were eighteen. Sort of worked in nine to five office jobs prior, prior to doing this, and sort of end of last year, fancied a bit of a change, looking around, seeing what seeing what was the right thing to do next, and right. came across the Boom franchise, which was um, felt like a really natural choice for, for sort of to step into having a bit of you know. We always describe it as not your typical accountants. Right, a, okay. a bit more fun than you normally find. Um, I was going to say, who says accountants don't have fun? You usually yeah, have a look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From accountancy to an axe throwing bar has been a bit, a bit of a shift. But yeah. Some yeah. leap. Yeah. So, so tell us, what, give us a bit of background on what you guys, obviously, you, you're saying you're both trained accountants. So yeah. give us the, the kind of journey to here. Um, Absolutely. So, so um, well, myself tra trained with sort of a big four accountancy firm um, in yeah. audit originally, moved into a footy company where I sort of worked in the finance team for about six years. Um, and then, yeah, kind of moved down. So originally from Teesside, moved okay. down to Swindon where I met the lovely Danny. Um, <laughs> and then we sort of met there and, yeah, kind of moved up to Glasgow December of last year and totally, totally changed our lives. Wow, well, that must so. have been some leap because obviously everything that's been going on for the last two years and talking about, we, we've talked in a lot of the shows about, you know, the challenges that have been there. Um, we're obviously trying as an industry to, to get away from talking about what the challenges have been and, and everything there, to people think are more than aware of them, but yeah. that's one of the things that I found really inspiring for you guys, and I know a lot of other people will, but to take that leap from, I mean, you've essentially moved your whole life <laughs> from one part of the country up to here, it's not just a a new business, it's a new city, new whole life, I'm guessing, is that, is that right? That must have been a bit of a yeah. upheaval, Danny. Yeah, I think it, you are right that the last few years have been a, a tough for so many people, but it also presented an amazing opportunity for us, and I think it lit, lit a fire that was probably brewing, Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it lit that fire, so 
we came up and fell in love with Glasgow, to be honest. And the concept was always strong, but for us, Glasgow is wanted it, and we wanted we wanted to be part of it. Yeah. I mean, Glasgow's known as a, a, a you know a, a, an entertainment city. Let's say we're known for or the city's known <laughs> for its you know kind of entertainment concerts and its its nightlife. Yeah. probably up there with London, but in a, a slightly different capacity. Um, is that one of the reasons why it kind of prompted you to, to get involved in the hospitality sector in Scotland? Yeah, I, th I think I think numerous different reasons. I think experiential leisure, which is, is, is what we're trying to sort of target in Glasgow, is, is really untapped. You've got, um, you know, like of Manchester, Leeds, London, you can walk down the street, you've got Put Shack, you've got Boom Battle Bar, you've got a host of different areas you can go and play yeah. golf, you can do different things. In Glasgow, there wasn't really anything apart from you know, a couple of local golf competitors, there's not really much here. And I think that was a massive, for the size of the city, it felt, yeah. like, a, it felt like a no-brainer to, to sort of tap into that market. Um, and you're right, I think when we first came up to Glasgow, it was, you know, we lived eight hours away and we thought, we'll go and see the venue and, and look, at, look at what it's about. And we ended up getting in at 3am after a big night out. And it just, <laughs> felt, it just felt right. It was, it was a, you yeah. know, a great city to be part of, really busy. And this was coming out of lockdown as well, so it was still restrictions yeah. in place. We struggled to get into five restaurants. The bars were all really, really busy. So yeah. it, it just felt right. And yeah, it was a sort of great, great location in the end. We've no, back. When, yeah. when you mention <laughs> location, as I say, that's one of the things that we've spoke to a lot of the, the kind of owners, people like Michael Bergson and stuff like that, yeah. and Louise McLean in, in, in previous shows, about it's the customers are really looking for an experience yeah. now as opposed to kind of snack at high, sell it cheap. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, the venues they're trying to cater for to bring the customer in, especially destination based venues. Yeah. But then kind of keep the customer there and have an offering that's yeah. going to appeal to them, not just for an hour or just to have something to eat. Yeah. Like yourselves, you, you guys aren't just a, you know, a, an activity venue, you're, you're a bar yeah. as well for people to come in and enjoy with, with friends. Is that Definitely. the kind of plan, the experience behind everything? Yeah, yeah and I think we. So uh, I look after a lot of the, the larger bookings okay. and I think that's what's been really exciting that we have had birthdays whether that be five-year-olds 50-year-olds we've had stags and hens and we've also it's been really nice seeing the corporates as they've come back to the office they also want to come back to socialise in together right okay and we've been able to be part of that we've been um, able to sell it, kind of team bonding nights things yeah. like that as well is that exactly good? yeah yeah I so you guys got a wedding we do. Coming up, is yes, that right? Yes. 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 That's exciting. Uh, yeah, September 2023. I I did wonder if she'd rang the right number when she first came <laughs> through. Um, but yeah, she's actually coming to visit um, in right. a couple of weeks. So we're really and excited. Then, to they, see is that from? Are they from Glasgow or are they from the field? So I believe they're an English couple, but the groom has uh, family in Scotland. Right. Okay. So, so travelling further afield to to come as well. Yeah. Th these are all the kind of exciting points, but. It must be a bit of a, a, not so much a culture shock, but yeah. when, when a lot of people have discussed over the last few shows about the challenges that we mentioned yeah. and things like that, and one of the things that we've been trying to encourage a lot of venues to do is look ahead and look at what they can do, yeah. as opposed to talking about what we can't do. Yeah. Right? We all know there's still challenges when it, it comes to certain things. Yeah. but something again as i say that really inspired me from you guys is that kind of almost no fear approach yeah. to, to again it probably isn't exactly the case <laughs> but, uh, but the, the thought of pushed ahead yeah. and, and looking at what you can do and how yeah. you can engage in the market and if uh, with the greatest respect of other if you guys can move your whole life yeah. from one end of the country to another with a new business new you know venue the, all the challenges that come with that and there's nothing to really stop anybody else in the industry that maybe have a, a bit more background or that are there expanding. But would that be fair? Or? Yeah, I, I th it, it was a really interesting journey we went through because we, you know we, we started looking at it sort of August of, of last year, and it was kind of you know restrictions were constantly getting eased and then they'd come back again. Yeah. And it, you, you kind of sit there a year ahead of opening and think we'll be fine. It's a, it's a year down the line, and we ended up opening two weeks before restrictions fully got lifted. So right, for okay. us, it's always been a bit of a you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We, we're not going into a point where we can see it getting worse and worse and worse. So we, we've, we've always had an eye on it, but I think that, as you've said, the key has got to be looking into the future and, you know, getting the venue open itself was, was quite a challenge in that environment, whether it's restrictions of getting people in, materials were really hard to find, so there's, you know, delays here and there. Um, yeah. 
but now, now we're finally open, as you said, it's looking forward and working out you know, what we can do next. We're, we're open, we're, do, we're doing well so far, so it's about what can we do around the edge to, as you said, retain people, get them in, drinking, eating, doing that kind of thing. Because yeah. so, yeah. you've been doing a lot of collaborations since you've been here, you've, you've been kind of integrating yourselves yeah. pretty much <laughs> very, very, very well. Um, and obviously you guys are, are going to be working with us at the second birthday yeah, bash. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Very excited. With, with the shuffle boards and stuff like yeah. that, which yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to. Yeah. Um, and having you involved in, but you've also been doing some work with one of our partners, Go Radio, Go Radio and, and yeah. engaging yeah, yeah. with that. And that's really positive to see. Do you, do you think collaboration with other partners or other engagement is, is important? Do you think that's going to benefit moving forward? I, I, think, I think for us, because we're such a new concept, you know, you can, you can advertise as much as you want, but collaborating, you know, we had Crofty and Guerdo in from Go Radio yeah. playing the games and it brings it to life and people watch that and think, oh, shuffleboard, I've never heard of one because, you know, one of the only shuffleboards in Glasgow and they yep. go, oh, I want to go and play that and, and they'll do it. So for us, collaborations, whether it's through Instagram, through lo local, you know, contacts, I think, I think it's been really important to bring the concept, you know, you can, you can put pictures of your food on Instagram, you can, you can put your drinks on Instagram, but actually watching people play it and, and do it is, is a different, and different actually, experience. And I, yeah, absolutely. Dylan so McGrado is a different experience. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah he's a, we, we love you, Grado. He's a, he's a, he's a love, lovely kid. Hard to manage, but very, very, very nice kid. I'm, I'm saying nothing. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. Crofty, I'll help me out to you. Um, but for, can I move forward? What's the, the kind of plan? For the venue, I mean, obviously you've achieved a, a hell of a lot in a, in a short period of time. Yeah. The, the venue is a traditionally a shopping centre, yeah. and, yeah. and being from Glasgow and, and knowing the, the city quite well, yeah. I'll be honest, the centre was quite quiet yeah. before. I, I, I know people that have got you know shops in the, the in the centre, yeah. Yeah. and it was almost seen as the to a degree the kind of poor child compared to uh, Buchanan yeah. Gallows yeah. as, as yeah. a shopping destination. Yeah. For the last few months especially since you guys have been here i've seen a massive level of footfall into the shopping center yeah. on the back of that and it's brought massive life back into the center itself yeah but what what's the plans moving forward for you guys specifically as opposed to just driving traffic for the center what, what's the the kind of core for you it, it, it's it's interesting because i think the um you know the center itself has been is, is gone through a massive change recently yeah. and I think you know you, you say to people are you in the city not centre and they go oh I didn't realise <laughs> there was anything else but shops there so <laughs> it's, it's been a really interesting journey you know we were one of the first to open with the cinema we've got Namaste and obviously Cosmos recently opened as well yep. and you know everyone knows a shopping centre these days needs to diversify to be able to survive and yep. that's you know hopefully we're in the right place at the right time to be able to do that we've got restaurants opening all around us which hopefully will create that create that buzz but I think the, the key next step for us has got to be, you know, pe people, people come to to us and then they kind of go to another bar somewhere else because they've come to a shopping centre to play a few games and then, then right. they move on. Whereas for us, you know, we talked about getting a DJ in, we talked about doing some collaborations with some other clubs to get people, you know, more seeing it as a bar and a venue to go yeah. and enjoy yourself with your friends. And, you know, it does feel weird walking out after a few drinks into a shopping centre. <laughs> yeah, shop but once yeah, people have yeah. done it once and they go, oh, it was a great night out there, they'll do it again. And it's yeah. just building that reputation and getting it's, that. It's, it reminds me back to, and you kind of being from the North East, we in the Metro Centre. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Where well, they used to have the roller coaster in the Metro yeah, Centre. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. big attraction. But the, again, yeah. that concept has been there in a shopping centre with bars yeah. and restaurants of that kind of offering yeah. Yeah. down south for a while. Yeah. Um, whereas in Scotland, we've not really had that kind of aspect. I, I lived in Leeds for three years, and they, just when they did the Trinity Centre, yeah. and that is a perfect example of where you've got four or five bars, and the shops want to still open until 10 o'clock because they get that trade, whereas yeah. for the city, they're going through that journey now where people are starting to open a bit later because they want to Oh, they could notice that Boom Battle Bar's got 300 people in on a Saturday lunchtime. They want to yeah. try and drive it into the evening as well. So I think, it, you know, we're at the start of that journey. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get there. But other, other places have done it really well. As I said, Trinity, Metro Centre have now got a really good leisure offering. So, you know, hopefully we'll be part of that for the centre here as well. That was one of the things that we spoke to on, uh, Anna Sarwar on the last show from the yeah. uh, Scottish Labour leader from the, the Radson Red. Sorry, I'll try and get my tongue out my, <laughs> out my ear. Um, but one of the things he was saying was, it's almost flipped the way hospitality worked from the point of view historically you would maybe you know go into town to do a bit of shopping or, or to go and get clothes or whatever it may be and then you would maybe go for lunch or you would yeah. maybe go for something to eat yeah yeah whereas he was saying and probably the, the, the stats the figures tell us that 
it's the opposite now. People are going to a venue to have dinner, to have lunch, or to have a night out. Yeah. Yeah. And on the way in, then they're going to a shop or they're going shopping it, to do that. Yeah. So that kind of concept of you know having a an entertainment venue, but an actual bar, yeah. That, that, yeah. A, a thriving, you know, vibrant bar that can drive that footfall into yeah. other, you know, retail venues. I yeah. think is really, really important for growth. Yeah, um, and I think we support each other. To be honest, like it for us initially, that shopping centre it did feel a bit strange. It, yeah. It's not, it isn't the norm, but we do as much as we're helping the retail sector. I hope by people that leave here on a Saturday lunchtime we'll also shop we also get people that are coming to the St Enoch because there's a shop they know is here yeah, yeah. and then they spot us and yeah. then they'll pop in and so I think we're, we're all helping each other which is exciting too. It's, it's important I mean f from our point of view as I said right at the start the, one of the key reasons we kind of came to work with you guys and, and, and have you involved is you, you've been a genuine inspiration to me <laughs> and, and to us because to take that almost leap of faith if you like <laughs> yeah is hugely inspirational <laughs> and I hope yeah. that a lot of the people watching uh, and other venues and anybody that's there um, take some inspiration from that because it's it's you know very commendable and, and very impressive. Thanks so, very much. I thank you for it. having us here. We, we genuinely encourage anybody to come down and get involved in Boom Battle Bar because the place is amazing. We love it. Uh, I know you guys will. But as I said, and, and as Jack said, it's not just an activity venue. It's a thriving, vibrant bar. And I know you'll love it as much as we do. Um, we wish you guys every success so and everything you do. It's been, it's been a pleasure and thank you for being on the show. I'm now going to go over to Natalie, who is apparently getting half pissed and cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Hi there, we're with the lovely Andy who is the AGM here at Boom Battle Bar. Tell me what you have made for me today. Hello Natalie, uh, <laughs> lovely to have you here. Thank you um, so much. So we thought we would showcase some of our cocktails for you. Um, starting off with our Ship Faced, um, which is our tropical sort of beachy vibe. Okay. Um, I don't know if she's trying it or... Oh, I'm it? definitely trying it. <laughs> definitely trying Absolutely. it. This is the one I did see on the menu that I was very keen on. Yeah, so we've got a blend of white rum and dark rum uh, with a touch of ginger in there as well. It's, it's, mm. it's nice. And I did see, what is Velvet Falerium? So Falernum... Have I said it wrong? <laughs> so Falernum is, um, it is from the Caribbean. Okay. And it's used in a lot of Caribbean type drinks. It just gives it that... Tropical edge. twist. Yeah. Gives you that flavour you're on the beach. Oh, I wish I was near there. <laughs> okay, can I try? Of course you can. Okay, thank you. Is this mint on the top? It's a little sprig of mint, yeah. Mint. Can't beat it. Oh, wow. I mean, its name is ship faced, it's guaranteed it's very to do strong. exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is lovely. Mm -hmm. Very tropical. Tell me about your next one. So, the next one is a favourite. It's our Who's Your Caddy? Okay. It's our spin on an espresso martini. Um, so, you've got everything in there that you know and love, but we use orange vodka instead of just regular vodka. Uh, gives it that nice little twist. Okay. Can I ask, did you come up with the names of the cocktails? Uh, no, I certainly did not, no. <laughs> right, okay, so it's got coffee in it as well. Mm -hmm, yep, guaranteed to wake you up. Okay, and I just don't need to stir or anything, I just have a drink. Wow, Absolutely. knocking things over already, and I've just had one. <laughs> oh, that is lovely. I do like coffee, but I think if I had too many of them, it would give me the shakes. <laughs> just for the morning, I think. Yeah, afternoon. Is that quite popular? It's very popular, yes. Nowhere near as popular as I was gonna our say. third drink, though, yeah. Right. Um, so this is our porn star dart beanie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's a classic at this stage. It's gotta be on the menu. Um, it's your mix of passion fruit, vanilla, and of course, your little side of Prosecco. Okay, I have a question mm -hmm. about the porn star Dartini. Yeah. I see when people order these, mm -hmm. sometimes people have the Prosecco as a shot. Right. Or they tip it into the cocktail. What is the correct way? Well, I would and say, <laughs> I would have to say that it's absolutely up to preference. Um, I think that it's 
personally supposed to go into the drink. Yeah. Um, but you know what we're like, especially in Scotland. In Scotland, it's anything goes in Scotland, shop. especially yeah. in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, well, I'm going to put it in. <laughs> okay. And I love the little sticker on top, Scotland, we're here. Yep. Beautiful. First boom Now, will this Scotland. fit? It looks as if it's going to... Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Taxi for me already. <laughs> would you like me to? I would, yeah. Would you like... Do you want to pour it in for me? Thank you. There we are. You did that with such grace. <laughs> it's not we my specialty. Okay. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, wow. Definitely my favourite. By my far. My favourite too. And is this your most popular on the menu, would you uh, say? I would say that would be po the most popular one on the menu, yeah. Wow. Everybody loves a porn star. I think I've TV. said about wow about 10 times. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's my most favourite. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go with this. Mm -hmm. Slightly reminds me of a pina colada. Uh huh, a little bit. A little, little bit, bit Mai Tai, a yeah. little bit pina colada, yeah. And then with. Who's your caddy? Yeah. Who's your caddy? Who's your caddy? Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with me. I've loved this. And now I've had a little bit of alcohol. I've got a bit more courage. I am going to kick Justin's butt at some of these games. Justin. Dream, believe, achieve. Wait, Justin, I'm ready. Right, time to get the battle on and test out some of these games. You ready to get whipped? <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, obviously, <laughs> but... <laughs> Game on. Ready. Yes! <laughs> yes! Boom! <laughs> I'm so good at this. Right, okay. You're really bad at that. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> that was oh. so bad. What the... What are you doing? <laughs> this one, I'm winning. Mm. Oh, yes. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, how'd you do that? <laughs> You're cheating. Well, let's, before I get embarrassed any further, <laughs> beginner's luck, obviously. But, uh, no, that was fun. I had a lot of fun with that. But, I had a uh, lot of fun kicking your butt. Next time, uh, we'll be less competitive. Anyway. Before we get any further embarrassed, let's go over <laughs> to try what Natalie's favourite is, is the food. Over to you. Just back from the games there, and it is safe to say that Justin is one big loser. Justin, you're a loser. <laughs> anyway, over to Danny here. Um, she is going to be talking about one of my favourite subjects, food. Definitely. Tell me a bit about your lovely colourful menu we have here. Yeah, definitely. So everything we have is sort of eat and play as our concept. So everything you see here, you can take around a pool table, a beer pong table, wherever you like. So at the back, it's all vegan, especially mm -hmm. for you, Natalie. Yay. So I got vegan dog, vegan nachos with some jackfruit and then our cauliflower bites Lovely. and our cauliflower and chicken both come with nine different sauces nine nine right okay what range kind of sauces <laughs> sorry i love us <laughs> so we range from <laughs> blow your head off spicy to right. a beautiful mellow garlic and parmesan mm, <laughs> so then we've also got our meaty nachos so pulled pork and chili beef and two different flavors of hot dog as well Okay, what's the flavours on the hot dogs here? So we've got all American here, so that's chilli beef. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our tried and tested, so that's blue cheese, crispy onions and balsamic glaze. And can I have that talking and put that on to the vegan dog? You definitely can. Ooh, <laughs> exciting, okay. And as you said, do you, do you tend to find people coming 
to the venue, maybe play a couple of games and then come and order food? Definitely. So some people take a break and sit down and have some food and chat to their friends, but it's also great. It's so easy to move. So you Yeah, I was going to say you've got all of these little dishes yeah. here that's transportable so they can take them from game to game. Definitely. So if you order at pool and then you've got a book in on shuffleboard, you can take them with you. And your menu is pretty colourful, so does that sort of tie in with the whole theme of your venue and I, lighting? And yeah, I think so, yeah. So you can see Boom's very, very loud, yeah. very colourful, so we really wanted to reflect that in what our menu offers. So uh -huh. you can see a nice, bright vegan salsa here. Um, and everything's also a bit how we see ourselves, so a classic, but with a twist. Okay. Just like, we hope we're a bar, but that little bit better. And all well, your with sort a boom. of... With a boom, <laughs> yes, exactly. And are all your containers like recyclable? Like we were moving? Yeah, so we were really keen for that to, to be a part of our menu. So everything you see here um, is recyclable, which is great for us and we're really proud that that's, that's part of the menu. So this really does tick a lot of boxes, obviously, because you have the games, people come in, they can eat, they can play, they can drink, they can play. I believe yeah. you can have kids through the day as well, so they'll Definitely. be ordering. Yeah, so kids welcome until seven, and yeah, both we hop our everything here, you can move around with your drink, mm -hmm. with your food, and you can try as many games as you like. Thank you so much, Danny. Let's get the boys back in. Wow, you got... how good is this? I, I thought you were completely out of order <laughs> for beating the boss in the first show, but hey, not to worry. Trust you to be coming foods about. I know, uh, how good does that look? It looks absolutely amazing. Even the vegan stuff, I'd be no, over that's mine. Oh, is that yours? Back right. off. <laughs> Demanding, not to worry. Listen, we've loved being here today. Thank you guys for having us involved and for having us, in, having us in. Food looks amazing. We'll get so much happening over the next couple of months. The guys are going to be involved in the event. Next month's show is going to be coming live from the event, the second birthday bash. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. We're all going to be there. We we'll look forward to seeing you there as well. Now for some music.